Hello and welcome back to my surrogacy pregnancy update. This week I am 31 weeks. So let's get the bump out. If uh, anyone's interested in me measuring the bump, I've just posted a YouTube short so you can see how big the bump is getting. I mean, you can see how big the bump is getting <laughs> by how big it's getting. Yeah, I think he may have changed position a little bit or he's just really genuinely had a growth spurt because it's got pretty huge. This line that I've got down the middle does look like something like where I've had my leggings but I haven't worn any clothes on my belly at all today so it is entirely the linea negra starting to get darker where uh, all those hormones are kicking in and making certain bits of my body darker. One thing that I didn't really realise would come of making a YouTube channel is all the different kinds of messages I'm getting. I had a girl message me from Guatemala the other day asking for help with home inseminations. She was really pleased to have seen my video and that they're successful. And she was just asking for some kind of TMI tips and help, which I was happy to oblige. I'm also chatting to a girl in the UK who's considering surrogacy. There's another woman who's working in Istanbul currently. She's thinking about surrogacy. And I'm also talking to the 250th surrogate baby born in the UK. So she's kind of an advocate for surrogacy. She was born in 1998. She's only three years younger than me. How cool is that? And yeah, we're just sort of chatting and it's so interesting to see from the other side because my mum had all these babies who are now adults and I'm not in contact with any of them. So it's really, really awesome to be chatting to this girl who grew up in a surrogate family. I'm having a midwife appointment on Monday, which I'm really looking forward to because I want to know which way the baby's lying. I think he's gone back to his original position now, but I'm sure he keeps lying transverse, so he's across, because I get like a really hard bit here, which I'm certain is ahead. So I'm kind of hoping he goes back to that position, just, <laughs> just so that the midwife can confirm what, what I think. But he's fidgeting about so much. He gets hiccups at least three times a day now and they last for about five minutes and I think they annoy him because he kind of kicks and fidgets while the hiccups are going on which yeah if I had hiccups for a solid five minutes I think I'd be pretty annoyed with that. Speaking of the hiccups as well I mentioned them last week and I wasn't very clear when I said that I feel them internally. What I mean is I can feel them in my bum hole. <laughs> Now, I don't know if that's normal, but I think because the whole belly kind of bloom, bloom, and it's still quite a small movement at this point. I tried to get it on film earlier and it's really difficult. But yeah, I feel it <laughs> as a pressure down below. It's, yeah, most bizarre. The midwife appointments also start to get more frequent at this stage as well. Until now, they've been every four weeks and now they move to every two weeks and then right up at 38 or 39 weeks, then it goes to weekly. And I think fortnightly appointments are fantastic at this point because, you know, they listen to the heartbeat, just generally keep on top of everything, check your urine, and just make sure that everything is still going smoothly. So I'm quite pleased that <laughs> they're moving fortnightly. I kind of wish they had been for a little while, but yeah, I suppose that's the NHS and funding for you. I'm gonna pop three pictures up on the screen because in one day my belly changed so much from when I got up it was like completely flat I yeah I could suck it in I can't suck it in at all now I think because he was laying in such a position that I know it's just extremely comfortable he kind of disappeared and then straight after I'd had breakfast boom the bumper popped out again and then I did a workout video and I was about to go out for a run and I realised he'd fully popped out, like back to normal. 
and this was all within the space of a couple of hours. So it's really, really quite amazing how much the bump change is just based on the baby's position. The coronavirus situation in the UK, it's pretty bad. So I'm not going anywhere. I've heard some horror stories of women being given caesareans at 31 weeks and you know, this baby's lungs aren't fully developed yet. He's not ready to meet the world. So I've basically shut the world out. I'm doing everything in my power not to get coronavirus. I really want that vaccine soon, but we'll see if it gets approved for pregnant women or not. I have a really, really wonderful flatmate, a really helpful, friendly neighbour who every time they go to the shop to text me if I need things. So I'm getting like drips and drabs of shopping constantly. I'm using HelloFresh. So I'm literally, I don't need to go out anywhere, which in the third trimester, like, yeah, I'm waddling around at this point. It is quite nice to be, to be indoors. I'm not going too stir crazy, I don't think. And it's my birthday next week. So a third trimester, very pregnant, lockdown birthday. What fun I'm gonna have. Fortunately, because I'm self-isolating, I'm gonna go and see my grandparents because I can't give them anything, they can't give me anything. We're as vulnerable as each other. So I'm gonna kind of make the most of that and we'll get a nice Chinese takeaway. One thing I noticed this week is a distinct lack of leg hair. Now, my leg hair has always been blonde, it's fair, but it's pretty much disappeared. And I was trying to figure out the last time I epilated. I do remember the last time I did my underarms, I didn't do my legs. So I'm thinking it's a good couple of months at this stage. So I'm wondering if it's because I'm growing a little fuzz on my belly and the hair's been redirected, or if it's because my head hair is growing really fast at the moment. I'm, I'm not really sure, but whatever it is, I love it. <laughs> the rest of my body hair is growing as normal. My underarms, my pubic hair, unfortunately, because I can't see that anymore. There's a big belly in the way. But if this is a permanent feature, that I don't get leg hair after pregnancy, that would be the best thing ever. But yeah, it's just yet another pregnancy symptom, side effect, I don't know, that I didn't know about. I don't think it happened to my mum. So yeah, lack of leg hair, it's fantastic. And last of all, I'm just wondering if you guys would be interested if I do a, a day in the life of an eight month pregnant woman video. So I'll be eight months pregnant as of Monday. And even though it is lockdown and I'm not doing a lot, would anyone be interested in, you know, my, my general day? please let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, click the like button if you have enjoyed this video. As always, thanks for watching. Bye for now.